start, we can share. We'll hit record, share screen. You guys, welcome. Thanks for being here. Um, it's kind of a big week across the country, just with Fourth of July and vacation, all the different things you guys we are facing and challenged with. But thank you for making some time to be with us tonight. Uh, I have been working alongside Christine here that you see for man long time 20 over 20 years in some, maybe 25 years now i don't know in some capacity we worked it previously together and now we're working on shackley together so um we wanted to just give a quick overview of who we are and introductions and then we'll just keep moving we're hoping to get through the, the material short and sweet leave some quite some time for questions at the end if needed and um so you guys can get on your way so especially those of you who are a little later than us all right, go ahead, Christine. This is who we are. Yeah, well, welcome. I'm Christine. I love, I'm passionate about helping others in their health and wellness and fitness. And I've been partnering with Shackley for like 11, 11 plus years. And really for people to dial in their nutrition and wellness. And I've been married to Steve in the picture here for about almost 27 years in September. And we've got three boys and one girl. And my daughter, Issa, that's 15, is sitting next to me tonight, which is super cool. And that's my family. Thank you for representing Isa and Gwen's daughter, and I think Angelise has a daughter showing as well. So thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Shauna, and I spend my days teaching teens about health and financial wellness at a local high school here in town. Uh, and I also have a, a Shackley business, and I have been married to Joe for 27 years also, and we have three teens. Luke is 19, Kate is 16, and Ben is 13. So on a regular kind of scenario before COVID, that meant that means I spent 24 hours a day with teens. So <laughs> whew, we are going to talk about things that are really helpful for teens, but that is that's a that's a treat. So actually I love, love, love working with teenagers. So that's a little bit about who we are. Um, who is your teen becoming? This is something I learned. I don't know if you guys can see the whole picture here, but I heard someone tell me years ago about how we really are developing and helping our teens move from life in our home to life outside our home, that we could help our kids become the kind of people who will be good citizens to their communities now and when they leave home. We are, especially this time of life, uh, we are in a world dominated by social media, and many of you have some of you are in the public school system. We have higher rates of anxiety, depression than ever before. And we have an incredible life into teens and to, to be so maybe whoever just joined, maybe put your put your phone on mute. That would be great just to keep out some of the sounds. So we have the the awesome option, um, awesome option to sit with our teens day in and day out to set healthy examples, to listen to them, uh, help set limits, which is really what they uh, they really want deep down, and to find out who they're becoming. So one thing we wanted to start with for sure is just a shout out to uh, remind us to really study our teenagers, study our, our, and the same for the teens or the moms, like, and the dads. As a teenager, what what are they like? Like, what is their personality like? I think for me, growing up, I don't think I ever asked my parents anything about their life until I got out of the house. Um, and the same as as a mom now, I'm used to kind of the way life is in my home. To think, what if I studied my teen and got to know them, especially as they get older, find out what you know what makes them tick. There's a couple resources there I posted. Find out what's their love language. Maybe you've heard of that. Maybe you don't even know yours. That's a great tool. All of these are designed so that we can help to get along better, which is uh, it's a plug because you know it's day to day with teens sometimes, right? Same with the teenagers. You would say the same, right? <laughs> Personality test for younger teens. There's called the Treasure Tree. It's a great little book that kind of defines some different personality types. And then for 16 plus, the Enneagram's awesome. There's so many things out there right now. And there's one called 16 Types that I do in my class and Color Personality Tests, which gives some great insight on what makes people do what they do and how they get along with each other. And then really ultimately kids spell love 
through time. So get, get some time with your kids. And sometimes in the teen years, it can be tricky. Uh, but have them plan out a day or a date or an afternoon where you, they get to do what they want to do. Even if it's something you are not interested in. I get some video games with my youngest. Not really my thing. But <laughs> so much to him. So stuff like that. Go do what they like to do. So. Yeah, I would say even um, Shauna, I love that. I remember when my second son being the second kid, the second same sex, so John and then Ben, and being the middle child. And I remember reading the birth order book, and that was tremendous insight into my second born, and that was really helpful. So I think being a student of your kid and knowing how they pick and um, what they like, what they do, and what what really resonates with them was really helpful. Well, I think as we go into tonight, um, health is not just about what you're eating, but it's also about what you're thinking and saying. And I think in this time of what COVID and just with the change of the students not even being in school and not being with their peers and not being with friends and just the long separation that happened, it was hard on a lot of us as adults, but also our kids. And mindset really matters. And so we really wanted to just touch on that. Of <laughs> <laughs> Got some good background noise there. Be sure to mute. So creating a mindset for health is so significant. And I, you know, we can eat correctly, we can exercise our bodies, but if our mind is just full of stress and emotions that we're not getting to sharing, it's really hard to really live in a healthy lifestyle. And I would say the biggest battle sometimes is what's in our mind. And, you know, the story that we're telling ourselves, maybe that. We're not good enough. We don't have what it takes. We're not like so-and-so. I think a lot of our kids have a lot of screen time, which we'll touch on in a minute. And it, you can just play the comparison game. So we start telling ourselves a story that really doesn't serve us and it probably hurts and hinders us. So that's something that we really want to take into account of just really loving on, you know, loving yourself, loving who you are and how you are made and just how uniquely you are. So that's something we want to make sure as a challenge for parents, it's us being able to breathe life into our kids this way. And the next slide, we just want to give an overview. And the overview of just really we're establishing a healthy foundation and healthy habits for our teens. And Issa knows there's some things I say over and over and over, and I think they finally get it. But tonight, you know, we just talked a little bit about mindset, but well-balanced diet, targeted supplementation that can really help fill the gaps, acne, hormones, bone health, hydration, managing stress, and then resetting our routine. So we'll cover some of these tonight as we go along. Thanks, Christine. All right, getting your veggies in. Are you able to see the whole screen, you guys? Okay. Get your veggies and fruits in daily. So I teach a, a, a nutrition, health, and wellness class at school, and we talk a ton about veggies and fruits. And I always ask people at the beginning of the year, you know, what, how many veggies and fruits do you eat? I mean, most of the class would say like, oh, I eat maybe one or two servings of fruit a day. So many kids don't eat vegetables and maybe it's because they don't like them. Maybe they don't have access to them, uh, whatever it is, but that's one of my main plugs. And we even have a taste test day where we do a lesson and I have probably like 30 or 40 different types of veggies and fruits on the table and they try them some of them for the very first time and they're shocked at how amazing they taste. So um, getting your veggies and fruits in daily is an, a huge, huge part. We need to be the ones who are modeling that. So sometimes we have to talk ourselves into liking veggies, but there's so many awesome recipes out there. And if you ever want some, we have a ton of resources like that. So. Uh, it says there, many parents have grown accustomed to making separate meals for their kids since they were little because they don't want to fight the battle of getting them to eat healthy stuff. Those were rough days. I remember that. Uh, but it's never too late to start. So a few ideas uh, to kind of get into the mindset of everybody in the house even is that healthy eating um, is not, eating out should say, healthy eating is not an, it's not an option. Like healthy eating is the option. Eating out Every day isn't. So it will save your life if you choose to eat healthy. The, the repercussions later matter now. Um, limit fast food to once a week or two times a month or choose a healthier option when you're out. That's a big deal. I know for my kids, they go out. When they go out, it's usually fast food, something simple, easy, quick, cheap. 
So if that's the case, maybe figure out what are some things I can choose to eat there or eat something healthy before you go and just have uh, something simple when you go out and rather than a big, big greasy meal. So limit it, make homemade food. This is a huge thing. I, you know, we have a cooking lab in my class and having, when the students choose the recipe and I shop for it, bring it back, they like it better when they've chosen it. It just is this psychological thing happens. So have them choose a night to cook, have them choose a recipe, make sure it's pretty healthy, and then take them with you to shop and help them cook. My daughter for a while was not a fan of a lot of things that I made. And so I said, okay, then you get to make dinner and here's the budget and you choose it. And she didn't really complain. She saw how much work it was. Uh, so take them, take them shopping when you go shopping to pick out veggies. Let them see all the different fruits and veggies that are available to us. We live in a very, um, a, you know, a culture where we have access to so many things. And so having them just see what's out there is a huge, huge win. And then as just a quick tip as a, as a parent or have your student do that, or your student, your child do this, spend an hour cutting up vegetables to have on hand so that they're easy to reach for all week. Plus you can teach them some great new skills. And then of course, I'm gonna say, have them take a cooking class at school. Those are some of the best things. I've had many, many parents on back to school night come up and say, they never had any interest in cooking until they took a class. And so sometimes that's what gets them over the edge. So. All right, let's see. How many servings of fruits and veggies do 13 to 18 year olds need? So girls, it's typically 1.5 cups of fruit, 2.5 cups of veggies. Boys, two cups of fruit, three cups of veggies. Here's a real kind of simple example of what that might look like. So sometimes people think you need to eat veggies and that just feels like you're eating them all day long. But um, if you're adding them into some of your snacks or eating them maybe in an egg in the morning, adding some of the veggies there, it's a real easy way to get that kind of stuff in. So, and they really will see a difference. You'll see a difference in uh, their skin. You'll see a difference in even the whites of their eyes and um, their overall health. Will be, it's really, really worth it. So. That's kind of something to aim for. More is better. A lot of people, a lot of kids really get a ton of fruit in. That's pretty easy because it's sweet and tasty, but veggies is tricky. So getting some, getting creative with how, how to make that happen. And then eat a healthy diet. What foods do you eat regularly that have zero nutrition? So that's a big deal. Think through what are you, you know, taking in each week, you as teens, us even just as parents, you know, what, what is a day, what does your food log look like in a day? See how many of those foods have zero nutrition. And what I mean by zero, meaning no nutrition quality. For instance, I love hot Cheetos, love them. I would never tell myself you can never have them again because I love them so much, but that's zero nutrition. So how can I limit that and maybe make it something I have once a week or every now and then? So kind of go through that. And then brainstorm together some swaps for healthier options. Have them Google that, look, look those things up. Really the goal is to eat a variety of foods, um, whole grains, beans and legumes, lean meats, healthy fats, and then try to avoid all trans fats and saturated fats. I'm pretty, pretty picky about not using the word never or avoiding altogether. Um, so that, those, are, those are tricky words to use, especially in, in the teen world. So just to, to limit them is a better way to maybe say it, because I think it can get kind of um, legalistic, maybe, if, if you kind of get into that kind of mindset. So. And then, is this mine, Christine? Mm -hmm. this is, yeah. Don't skip breakfast. That's another really, really important one. Um, don't skip breakfast. That's very common. I cannot tell you how many students come to my class and they haven't eaten any breakfast. Uh, that is one of the most important meals of the day. If you break the word down, you're breaking your fast. You've been sleeping all night, so you've been fasting all night. So you need a break, break that fast and actually take some, some nutrition in. 16 ounces of the water right when you get up. Take that in at least 16 ounces of water. And um, you want to start with protein. That's going to help out balance out blood sugar and hormones. And our favorite in our family, I know Christine would say the same, and many of you probably on this call, but our favorite is the Life Shake. It makes an excellent healthy meal on the go. Here's a little 
some of the deets on that. We have a brand brand new flavors out. Um, the, it's amazing. The life, the, the taste, the texture, everything. It's it's definitely one of the best tasting proteins out there. I've heard that from so many people. We have cafe latte, rich chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. And those are some of the so the the things that it that it comes with. Protein, 20 grams, leucine, helps you build lean muscle, burn fat, and then added probiotics. So it's an incredible all-in-one option, especially for the teenagers, especially during the school year. Those, those who are very active, um, it's a, an amazing way to start the day. Getting that blood sugar level, kind of pushing you out the door, your brain is ready to learn. So skipping breakfast is pretty detrimental to your overall kind of health throughout the day. You'll see some of the repercussions later in the day if we, if we forget to eat breakfast. So super easy. We have a ton, ton of, of smoothies. I don't know, Issa, do you have a favorite smoothie recipe? I do. <laughs> tell us, tell us about it. Um, I usually do strawberry protein and I have tons of strawberries and I do banana, water, and it's, it's perfect for the mornings to go. Oh, I love the strawberry too. That's awesome. yeah. 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 We do a lot of chocolate at our house. Those are there. My kids love the chocolate. So all right. thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I would say just like Shauna mentioned about the hydration first thing in the morning. And sometimes that's hard, but I have a mug by my kitchen or not by my kitchen, by my bathroom sink. And also when I go downstairs, I love my coffee and I love putting like a, a teaspoon or over teaspoon of coconut oil and, and whipping that up in the Vitamix, but I'll make myself drink water first. And so hydration is key. And so the goal is to drink about half your body weight in ounces. And, and especially for very active teens that are going into sports and, and riding their bikes to and from school when that happens again, and, and just active all in all, they need even more than that, half their body weight in ounces. And so you can see the blue box of the benefits, but it's, you know, clear skin. It's you, when you are dehydrated, your performance level, your mental, like concentration, focus, everything just, it's fatiguing. Um, having hydration balances out those blood, the blood normalizer, calorie control, uh, so much of just what your body needs to flush out. <laughs> and then you can see on the right, um, I think really creative ways to make water taste better, like put it in a pitcher and put some fresh fruit in it, or um, I'll squeeze even a half of fresh lemon. So I buy lemons, I buy limes, or it's just hanging out on my kitchen table. Um, but even if you want to spritz it up, you know, having just fresh fruit is great. And the big yellow box is a huge thing of limiting. I think what, what Shauna said, a really good keyword is limiting sugary beverages and avoiding diet beverages just because your body doesn't recognize that fake sugar and it, it just doesn't need it. And so teens really working towards having just 25 grams of added sugar and that equals six teaspoons, that's not much. And so I know my I know Issa when she would walk to school and there's some of those days she's like, mom, can I go to, uh, um, what's that place called? By school? Jamba Juice. Yeah, Jamba Juice or Starbucks and get like, a really sugary like Starbucks drink, right? And so you think about the tall cap caramel frappuccino has 46 grams of sugar and a can of Coke has 39. So just seeing how much sugar can creep into certain products that you wanna try to limit, right? So go to the next one. Um, and gut health, so hydration, really huge flushing out, toxins flushing out and getting things moving, but gut health. So when we see that maybe our, our teens suffer from gut issues to eczema, allergies, even upper respiratory, sneezing um, and acne, some of it could be what's going on in the gut. So 70% of the immune cells are in the gut. So if our gut is not healthy, it's really reflective in the rest of our body. And there's a couple of products that that Sean and I and some of you on this call have, have used that really deliver some key benefits to getting your bacteria, your microbiome really back to health. Um, and so restoring intestinal flora, regularity, and just when we're, the constipation, gas, bloating, all that. So there's a couple of good things that we really recommend because of the quality and they really do work. Um, and just that's a huge thing to be, in my, to be mindful about is gut health. Uh, the next one, bone health. So we're hitting some big ones here. This was really interesting. 
the period of greatest bone growth is during puberty and adolescence. And so even for the, and roughly that's between 11 and 17 years old, but in girls, as much bone is built in the two years surrounding her first menstrual cycle, as well as it's lost in the last four decades of life when we're going through, you know, post that menopause. So just crucial this time of our kids getting some good calcium in their system. And it's interesting, osteoporosis has been called the pediatric disease with geriatric, geriatric consequences. So it's not until later in life we see the results. Um, so that you can see just in that chart of just bone mass throughout the life cycle, puberty, peak, and menopause. And so um, sometimes it's just if we're not getting into our diet, this is where good supplementation really, really keys in. About 600 minimum international units of vitamin D a day, because that will help, um, you know, calcium helps dissolve or get absorbed that vitamin D. So there's a couple of products that are great, and they'll say that vitamin D, if we're not getting it from the sun and we're putting on a lot of sunscreen, we're really not getting it into our system, that vitamin D is a very inexpensive but really potent vitamin to, um, to get into our system that we need to take with food. Um, anything else, John, on this one? Yeah, I think that's, this is probably the most, um, if you're talking about targeted solutions in your kind of uh, supplement repertoire, I guess you'd say, is osteomatrix during these teen years is just crucial. I make sure my kid, um, kids take at least two a day. My daughter takes four, if she remembers. Um, mm -hmm. And I try to do it at night because it's also this natural muscle relaxer and it'll help kids sleep better. Another, what's really great about the products that we're, we're talking about tonight is so many of them are used for so many different ways, in so many different ways. So if you have a headache or if maybe you have younger kids who have leg aches or leg cramps in the night, um, osteomatrix is a great, great option. So, but yeah, building that bone bank, it's so fascinating. And I think for those of us who are past those, those banking years, you know, we have to work really hard with uh, lifting weights and making sure we eat the leafy greens to, to keep that. So I've worked with a lot of clients who, are really struggling with osteopenia or, or osteoporosis, even pretty young because of this lack of calcium kind of banking early on. So it's good stuff. Excellent, awesome. Okay. So consistency is key. And I think our kids now, um, you know, they, they've gotten to a rhythm of what are some of the key things that I, I encourage them to take because none of us are eating a perfect diet. None of us are getting all of our um, leafy vegetables and nine to 12 servings of, you know, colorful array of fruits and veggies. It's hard. Um, but so something that we would say is just a really healthy foundation is a multivitamin and protein. And protein is, you know, me first. It's the building block of all cells. And as teens, we need that good protein. And the protein in the life shake, I love it has such a high percentage of the branch chain amino acid leucine to really help build that lean muscle which revs metabolism, you know, kind of satiating and just gets that, that body going. And so B-complex is great. It, it is what, it's water soluble. So when we're stressed, um, our bees get depleted and we have to take in more bees. And if our bees are depleted, that's when we're kind of cranky, we're irritable, we're more carb craving, um, hormonal, irrational, just different things are going on. So that's something that we can easily supplement another good targeted solution to boost the mood. And then again, we talked about the, the probiotic, really good for gut health, um, because again, a lot of it starts in the gut. And osteomatric bone health um, for cramping and like what Shauna said is really excellent. And then for the brain, just fueling the brain, Omega Guard, a good um, Omega is, is really key as also for a foundation of health. So, you know, sometimes it, it's just, we want the best, we want our, our kids, and we want ourselves to feel the best. And so these are some great, I think, starting off, um, you know, products to really look into and start putting into your repertoire of some really good health. Lisa, how do you remember to take your vitamins? Do you take them at a certain time or? Um, around when I eat breakfast or if I totally forget <laughs> parents. <laughs> so youth beats old, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's so hard. It's She's just, pretty good at it. Yes, you're like, but it's the 13 year old that's not good at it. So, nope. <laughs> right? No, 
I know, yeah. that's exactly right. <laughs> All right, we're gonna tackle hormones and menstruation and uh, our periods are unique to each person but balancing hormones and filling the gap of nutrient deficiencies greatly helps with mood swings, irritability, and the discomfort of cramping. Gotta love this reality in our life, right? So what to do, and everyone's gonna be different, everybody's gonna re respond differently, um, and it can even change month to month, as we know. But here's a few ideas of how to help kind of balance and, and keep some of the mood swings more at bay and certainly the cramping and the irritability. So GLA is really one of my favorite products. It's a gamma linoleic acid. It helps regulate hormone balance due to nutrient deficiencies and mood swings. And for me, I literally would call it monthly rage. So. I'm at the other end of this thing now. We're kind of into the whole menopause thing, which is another whole Zoom, really, right? But, um, but the monthly rage, when I started taking the GLA regularly and then maybe took a couple extra right before my period would start, it would, it would soften the rage. Everyone in the family could do this, so it's great stuff. But um, definitely recommend that for... Uh, for any age, when they're starting that whole menstrual cycle pre kind of leading up to it, it's, it's incredible. B complex is also great, reduces stress, helps remove, helps hormonal balance and reduces water retention. So another great option. And then again, the osteomatrix, like we said before, that's going to act again as a muscle relaxer, helping reduce cramping by providing proper mu muscle relaxation. Sometimes people get headaches. Another. So those are three great ones to have in hand. If you had to just pick one, I would pick the GLA um, overall. Uh, it's It really does balance and help. So. So we have a chant at our house. So what's oh, our chant? So anytime anyone's acting up or like me and mom are just mad, we go, um, take your GLA. We're like, like GLA. <laughs> so even my 13-year-old son's like, mom, you need to take your GLA. Because I'm in that kind of raging, you know, kind of like witchish kind of like, <clears throat> I can just pull someone's head off right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know my cycle. And <laughs> so yes, we, there you go. Perfect it's example. Also, Monthly rate. Also, Even though, you know, I think boys do have a, a type of period also. I'll call it that. They would have. Yeah. They do have a hormonal, hormonal kind of swing. Um, so I think it would help them as well. So if that's the case in your, in your world, great. Um, okay, moving on to acne, gotta love acne. You'd think, you know, as you get older, you have less acne, but I still deal with it, still battle it. Uh, there's again, so many different responses to, um, this is not a one kind of formula that's gonna work for everybody, but here's kind of interesting background. The exact cause of acne is not known, but hormones called androgens can play a role. These increase in both boys and girls during puberty. So that's very common to see um, more acne during puberty. The skin's oils glands get larger and make more sebum, it's called. And genetics also play an effect. Maybe your parents had acne. You may have inherited that tendency. Thanks, mom and dad, right? <laughs> Other causes, some medications. So that's something to really look into. If you are on medications, look and see what some of the side effects are. I have a friend whose son is on some a medication for some um, ADHD things and he's having lots of breakouts so then they put him on acne medicine and then it's just this constant uh, kind of roller coaster very very frustrating and hard on that kid. Uh, cosmetics have a greasy consistency so make sure you're using water-based products uh, rather than oil-based. Obviously menstruation right before that's a, a huge acne kind of flare-ups and then a diet high in sugar and fat, that's going to increase. And, you know, I think we could probably all attest to that and see when that kind of stuff happens. So, so what to do, hydrate like crazy. Uh, we talked earlier about hydration. I'm not kidding. The more you drink, the clearer your skin will be. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, don't touch your face. I feel like I learned that when I was really young. So even now, like doing this, I'm like, oh. So try not to, you know, the oils on your hands, that, that can kind of irritate and cause flare-ups. And then we love the Shackley's Youth Skin Care. I would probably not have my teenager use the whole thing, but a, a base, a, their cleanser, the toner, and the moisturizer, uh, they will see a difference for sure. 
over time. So it's an incredible system that actually kind of reheals and regenerates those skin cells. Alfalfa is really great for acne. Herblax is another one that kind of detoxifies uh, some of the things going on in the body. Shackley's Herbal Cream is really good for kind of spot acne. Uh, my kids have used that many times. And then the GLA also helps with acne. And then zinc. Yeah. Zinc is an incredible option. Uh, the more zinc you get, the, the clearer skin you get. So it reduces infection, speeds up the healing. So if you were to pick one thing, I mean, I would definitely encourage a skincare uh, line of some sort. Shackley's is pure, clean, and there's a lot of things out there that aren't. I feel like kids are putting so many different things on their skin, even just lotions. So to be real careful with all that kind of stuff, because, you know, if you think about your skin, it, it's just whatever you put on immediately um, is absorbed in your blood. And so a lot of those bath and body will be really fragrant smelling skin lotions are really, really damaging to not just your skin, but kind of your immunity and a lot of things like that. So just to be careful, but I would do a skincare option and then um, maybe increase zinc and water, lots of water. That's what I would suggest. So, okay. <clears throat> so this is something that I think a lot of us have felt just recently with, um, the change, what happened with COVID, I think with, um, you know, our, our not seeing friends, not seeing people, job insecurity, job loss, job layoffs, um, so much happened just in fear and anxiety and, and just separation, depression. There's a lot of stress I think people have been carrying. And so one thing to really help manage stress, even for our kids, is just to be active, to be outdoors, to get some natural sun, to move their bodies, to exercise really is so good for the health, for the, for the body, for the mind. And just, there's so many benefits, even just you can see on the screen of just reducing, just even um, risk of heart disease and just diabetes and cancers, really helping in achieving and maintaining a healthy weight. Sorry. And, and that's okay. <laughs> and just reducing those feelings of anxiety, <clears throat> the bones and muscles and joints. But I think for, for so much of that exercise, managing stress was just moving to really manage that, um, that mindset and that healthy, that mental health. Um, so even for kids, I know Issa started, you know, it took a while because I think we're all in hibernation mode, but it took a while to get into healthy habits of, of doing body weight exercises in her room. And then I have a gym. And so she was lifting weights and doing things on her own. And actually she did some Zoom zooms with one of her girlfriends and they would zoom together when you know we couldn't see anybody and they would get on and do workouts together and keep each other accountable so I think it's always fun to do fitness with the friends so that really helps lowers that that stress and doctors recommending that teens you know in this age 13 to 18 they're getting at least one hour of moderate to vigorous exercise activity most days of the week so when in school and then their after school activities, this was happening, but right now it was, it's, it's hard. It's challenging. It's getting your kid outdoors and, and getting moving. Um, but this is really something. And as, as parents and as moms, we can model exercising because they're watching us. And so maybe this is something that you with your child, with your teen, you can keep each other accountable. I know in our household, we try to keep each other accountable and exercise together do some fun family fitness stuff or hiking volleyball, volleyball. volleyball or whatever in the, in the, in the park, which is fun. Um, start, start small, like I know, yeah. at different stages. So a walk around the block, if that's all, that's an incredible start. So just yep. walk and talk to a friend, you know, and do something together. But yeah, I think that's great. And then the next one on, on stress, um, just teens need their space. And I think something that's as, as a parent, I've had to really, um, going back to knowing my child and knowing that they're all different, different personalities, um, different how they like, whether extrovert, introvert, what really gets them going and, and just needing their space. So this is kind of a funny one of just it's so nice to get away from it all and it all is mom and dad in this picture, <laughs> which sometimes I know my kids need their break from mom and dad, especially when we've all been cooped up in the same space for so long, um, but they still need us. And we still need to be present. And so finding that balance of chatting with them and, and finding what, what means, you know, going on that walk. If you have a pet, you're going on that walk with them or, um, or heading to their room and just chatting. 
and connecting about like their day and how they're how things are going what they're looking forward to the next day or the week or and just to listen and sometimes it's just it might take a while you know depending on that relationship that you have with your child but just listen and just and don't give up and um i know even physical touch i'm it's just whether it's like messing with their head or rubbing their shoulder or giving them a, qu a quick squeeze or a hug or something just to say i'm here i'm recognizing you um, I just want to know that, want you to know that I'm here. So I think it's just that physical touch and time is huge uh, for some teens, for sure. Thanks, Kristen. Another thing that I'm sure the teens are rolling their eyes right now, I can just feel it, but is screen limits. So I have linked here, and we can send the link at another time. If you've invited you, I can send it on, but 10 strategies to limit your teen's screen time. I think this is pretty interesting that in 2010, so this is nine years ago, but um, found that eight to 18 year old children devote an average of seven hours and 38 minutes to entertainment media each day. So that's a lot. And especially during COVID, I think we've all increased our screen time for sure. But some of the things that are happening as a result are, um, you know, some of the depression, uh, higher rates of um, anxiety, they're all absolutely related to the screen issue. So here's a few ideas there of making screen time a privilege. I put there in the middle there, it says parents get to set the limits. So help, keep, help them by keeping phones, computers, iPads out of the rooms at night. That's not across the board. A lot of people don't do that, but I have talked to so many parents who have chosen to do that. And it was a little tricky at first and they weren't real thrilled about it, but over time, uh, they, uh, one couple came and said their their older son came and said thank you, thank you for doing that and having that rule because it's just so tempting and addicting and um, games or whatever. So just just remember that we get to set the limits. Uh, it's kind of a privilege in our house. It's something. It's really the only thing that matters to a couple couple of my kids. So if, if there's a consequence that needs to happen, screens are out and it is pretty devastating. So. Mm -hmm. That's great. So they want limits. They have boundaries help us grow. So don't 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 forget that. But those are a few ideas, um, you know, of helping of helping teens in, in light of strategies to limit their teen. Another thing here, I won't go through all this, but uh, if you go back and look at the recording, or we could even send this uh, ten social media tips uh, for your. Let's see if I can, I'm sorry. And social media tips for teens. This is a great little list for your teen and what they're posting. I think they need to think through some of the things that are happening. So uh, it might be worth having a conversation about it. You know, there's a lot, a lot of bullying, a lot of, you know, I can see it in, in school all the time. A lot of, a lot of the kids who maybe come in at lunch are down because they saw this on or somebody posted this about them or whatever. It's a really, really big deal pretty toxic environment. I think I do. I, I feel sad and stressed for the teens nowadays. I think growing up in a, in a non-media centered world, my child, I feel pretty grateful uh, because you guys are really under so much pressure. It's a very, very big deal. So parents, we are the ones who are going to help protect that, even though it's going to be tricky and they aren't going to maybe act like they love us so much for a while, but that's okay. And then managing up? stress. Is this yours? Sorry. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> managing stress. Um, something that's really been helpful for our kids is Stress Relief Complex. It's a product that Shackley makes that is super helpful um, in terms of calming down. It's not something that's going to make them drowsy, but we give this to our kids maybe after a rough day at school or before a game that they're very stressed about or uh, before a test that's coming up. Uh, it's a great, I've used it before when during the school year if I have a lot going on I have it by my bedside and I'll take one and I sleep well so it doesn't make you drowsy but it just calms you down so that's a great option to have on hand. It's not something you would take regularly it's something you would take when anxiety kind of ridden type things are coming up or, or if they just are um, antsy. Maybe there's some um, attention issues or whatever. Teens also need eight to 10 hours of sleep a night. I cannot tell you how many students I've talked to who go to bed 2, 3 a.m. in the morning 
you know, school is just start at seven or whatever. So really trying to help them find that routine. A gratitude journal. This is something my oldest, he's 19. He started a few years ago, had a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. And that was one of the tools, a counselor we talked about um, trying to use. And he, it's really changed his life. He would talk, he talks about it all the time. So it helps bring calm and perspective. And then space to journal, maybe, I don't know if all teens are kind of into journaling, but if, if they can find a place where they feel is safe, kind of a sacred, safe place where they can actually be honest with everything they're feeling, there's something about getting it out on paper and writing it that does some pretty powerful things to your brain. And like physiologically, you'll find a calm after that. I do that in my classes even. We'll take 10 minutes and just have kind of quiet and they'll write out whatever's on their mind. I, I don't read it. It's for them to just kind of brain dump and the whole mood shifts in my class. So it's a great, it's a great tool. A communication journal. I've worked with a lot of parents over the years. I've used this in our house. Um, if it's a season where talking with each other is hard, where it's just rough. Uh, we've used a journal where like, okay, if it's easier to write out all your thoughts or all the things you want to say to me, great. And then you leave it on my bed or on the table and I'll listen and read it when all the emotions are down. Um, I have a friend who's used it in their marriage because he works a lot uh, and he travels quite a bit. It's a way for them to get what up, what's out on their, out of their minds onto paper where there's not high emotions in the process. So, And then this last one, creating, um, setting up a space for creating any form. I think... If you can try to make this happen, I, I have done this over the years in, in different seasons, and sometimes a couple of the kids are like, this is so lame, but by the end, they're, you know, coloring and whatever, and it, it's such a great way to help kind of calm, manage stress, mm -hmm. just get away from the phones, do something totally different, whatever it looks like. And so those are great tools. And then... I love those. I love those, Shauna. Um, uh -huh. And I would say too, even at nighttime, um, <clears throat> I have a small little journal and it's a gratitude journal. And that's something even it would be great for my kids to start on their own, their own first three things that come to mind that I'm thankful for. And maybe there's days that it was only two things. And it was like, I'm glad I have air to breathe and water to drink, <laughs> you know, but just that if it was a really hard day, but there was something to be thankful for or something to be, to have gratitude. Um, goes a long way and the communication journal I think is is great when my father and I weren't weren't communicating well this is years ago I got a book that had questions and it was just my dad writing the questions and literally giving me the book so I could read it and then me giving it back so even for a parent child that questions if they want to on their own like what's your greatest fear what's your what do you want to be when you grow up what's the hardest thing you've ever done like those kind of questions that if that child likes to write and things out, you get to learn about that, your child that way, your teen that way. That's awesome. really helpful. So the next one's my little vulnerable picture here. <laughs> and we didn't, want, we didn't want the moms to be left out too, but um, reset your routine. I think even for teens, for moms, for all of us, that how we can really, really segue into healthier habits all across the board. And so I loved what this one friend, Tracy, said that, Starting her day when we talked about um, some of these supplements and the shake, the life shake, just that it fuels our body, not just fuels, you know, not just fills us up, but really fuels our body and just balances our immune system, digestive system, mental clarity, energy. And I think it's just been such a go to. And I think when I started dialing in some healthy habits and just finding a new routine, it really allowed me just to, to try to work on my fitness goals and health goals and really made a difference. And so we want to include you guys in that about resetting your routine. And we have another Zoom next week talking more about that. And this is a jump start to what that looks like. Um, a challenge to say, all right, I'm in for 30 days. Help me get re, re, um, recalibrated and find some good energy and find some healthier habits. And honestly, Sean and I have done this multiple times of coaching people through and personally doing it ourselves to just eat healthier. And when we started eating healthier, we're the ones mainly cooking the meals, buying the groceries, putting it on the table, and our kids, you know, get the overflow of just us making healthier habits. So it was something that um, I remember one of my girlfriends, and she's on tonight, you know, just even she realized I brought more veggies into my whole family by me doing this. And so it really, 
you know, some of us have been meat and potatoes and we, it just opens up an array of like, okay, healthier habits. I do have confidence that I can make some homing meals. Cause I think sometimes early on I was overwhelmed and, you know, tired and I didn't want to cook and I didn't want to make home wholesome meals. And now it's become a really healthy habit and it's something I really love to do, but it wasn't always that way. Um, and so the next slide, uh, Real quick, we, I was going to say, oh, go ahead. I did have a friend who actually did this with her daughter. They did, she, the daughter didn't do all of the parts to it, but they made a commitment for 30 days and they did the, the cleanse. That could be, you know, something that's a little modified, but they committed to kind of resetting the routine and it really made a huge difference in this teenager's life. She's about to clean. So doing things together is so, so important. So, yeah. And you're right, that's where it goes back to the team helping be part of the meal making and the dinners and the ideas and looking on Googling Pinterest, you know, some good healthy meals. Well, we just wanna thank you. We wanna to close tonight and, and we'll, we'll be able to get some questions, but this is a picture of our team and this is a picture of what we love to do. And we, you know, we love sharing health. We love sharing our mission of helping people live healthier lives. And like Sean and I said, we have, we have worked together in nonprofit work before we found Shackley and, and we have an amazing team. So we never want to just remiss and give the opportunity to say, um, we love adding to our team and we would love if this is something that you think, well, maybe I, I could do this. I could do something like this part-time or I could join you guys or be a part of your team. We just want to invite you. And we just obviously want to thank you for joining us too. All right. Thanks, Christine. And that, that's right there for all the teens and everyone on. You are amazing. Remember that. Sometimes those are just simple words that actually we need to believe. So thank you for joining us. We will, let's open it up for some questions if there are any. I'm not sure how many people are on, but if you have any questions, let us know. We can try to tackle some. We can unmute. Yeah. So, yes. People can unmute and we can stop share if we want to see people's faces. Perfect. I can figure that out. Yay. If anyone has any questions, go ahead and mute if you have anything. Thanks, babe. Hi. <laughs> Gwen, any questions or any, any, yeah. Um, not really a question. I was just going to say that my son, uh, who just turned 18 has been taking vitalizer every day and to the point where if he forgets it and got to high school, he would like call me or text me and ask me to bring it to the school. So that's another just easy option I just wanted to throw out there for people uh, because he's like, mom, I forgot my vitalizer. I can't, you know, it just keeps him awake. It gives him energy and he felt it helped him focus at school too. So that. that's been I great. Just, I just started getting Ben, my second one. He was the one that was like, I want what dad's taking. I want the vitalizer strip. It's convenient. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, okay, if you'll take it, I will order it for you. And right. yeah. He's become very diligent. So I love that. That makes sense. That's a great, great. I, that's awesome to hear that. I mean, a high schooler would call you and bring it to me. That's pretty awesome. But he knows the difference. He knows how he feels, which is wonderful. Yeah, sure. exactly. Well, and now he's going to IU. Oh, my goodness. I know. It's so crazy. He asked me, he's like, are you going to send me meal bars at college, mom? I need my meal bars. <laughs> So that's great. No, I did. I have two addresses for my kids at school. I sent them to their dorms or they went and picked up stuff when they came home. So yeah. Awesome. Oh, well, thanks for joining us. Love Thank you. you. Yes. So thanks, good. You guys. Thank you guys. Thanks to all your teams. Isa, thanks for being on. Appreciate yeah. it. You guys have a great night. Okay. And you just, did you stop recording? I'm going to try. <laughs> there, I stopped. <laughs>